What's up everybody, Superdux fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2016 Chevy Corvette Z06. Huge, huge thanks to Tom Henry Chevy for allowing me to review not just one, but two Z06s for you guys today. I have a hard top manual here, and then I have an automatic convertible. So we're gonna be driving both and uh, kind of comparing the two, and uh, yeah, it should be fun. So about the Z06 here, well, it's just an epic, epic car uh, in every single way. And um, you can tell that from the outside here too. It's definitely a lot meaner and a lot more aggressive than your standard Corvette. You have the much wider hips there in the back. You have the additional scoops. Uh, you have the larger spoiler. Uh, and this one doesn't have the Z07 pack, so you don't have the crazy lips or the ground effects and all that kind of stuff, but it still makes a statement here. I mean, you have these large uh, gills here in the side of the front fender and uh, the wheels and everything. I mean, it's just the stance, everything about it just looks so mean and looks awesome. Right, for the interior of the Z06, well, it's really special feeling, uh, especially this one in, with this uh, spice red package, which is the spice red leather seats, and which I think is a really cool combination uh, with the Long Beach red exterior, by the way. But anyway, sitting down in these seats, um, they're really, really nicely done. Um, these are the standard, you know, same seats you get really in a regular Corvette and feel great. Um, they have just excellent uh, torso support here, uh, hugs you in really nicely, but it's wide enough to, you know, be comfortable for all body types, I think. But uh, and yeah, just a really nice and sporty seat. Uh, you do have some pretty low um, thigh support here, uh, but it is there. And, uh, you know, I think, especially this with a manual, you don't want a super tight uh, bottom part of the seat. So it's kind of nice the way that it's set up. And uh, overall, they're really nice, comfortable seats. It's nice perforated leather that's heated and cooled here in the 3LZ package like this one is. And uh, overall, just really nice seats. Next to the steering wheel in the Z06, which is ideal in every single way honestly i mean flat bottom nicely leather wrapped you have a perfect nine and three grip that feels really great in your hands nice ten and two notches as well you do have these paddles back here even though this is a manual uh those are just for cost saving measures uh you know they can have the same uh steering wheels for the automatic and the manual um but they will activate the rev matching if you want that auto down shifting and stuff going on which is a cool feature to have um but anyway i mean it's a really nice wheel i mean you have the metal accents here in the center and the carbon fiber uh uh, trim here down on the bottom and uh, overall like I said it just feels great in your hands. Next to the gauges in the Z06, which are you know about the same as all the other uh, Corvette gauges, which is a wonderful thing. You have a nice large digital portion there in the middle, but a nice mix of analog gauges to go along with it as well. Uh, of course, here in the Z06, you have that boost gauge there down at the bottom right corner, which is always nice to have there for the supercharger. Uh, and uh, so you know you have a few different uh, modes here that'll be reflected in the screen there, and uh, you know all kinds of good information you can pull up there for the center screen. You also have a heads-up display, which is very nice to have, and uh, so that way you don't even have to really look down at this gauge plus or whatever you're driving too much and so uh, nice to have that as well the shifter in the z06 here is really nice it's a seven speed manual and um it's very firm um it's like you know very tight in the way that uh the gates are set up here so i mean it feels good in your hands and uh you know it's nice to go through the gears in but um def definitely very tight so it takes a little more muscle than the standard manual transmission um but i don't think any z06 owners will object to that coming along to the center of the dashboard here it's really nice again everything's angled towards the drive and uh, that's always a very cool way to set up a sports car here um, and so uh, you might have some uh, passengers that complain about that though because you have a pretty big divider here with this grab handle here for the passenger side but anyway uh, you have the very uh, familiar Chevrolet MyLink uh, display here in the center which is a nice size um, you know high resolution full color does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto like all the other 2016 Chevrolets which is nice to have that uh, feature but the nav system you know for the MyLink and stuff is good as well uh, easy to you know browse through all the audio settings and all that kind of stuff and overall just a very easy system to use and this one also has the performance data recorder too which is a uh, very cool and much like the ctsv's uh, data recorder and will allow you to record uh you know the stuff going on in front of you as well climate controls and all the other buttons here uh, in the center are all very nice as well i mean again you're not paying for you know high-end stuff in a z06 here you're paying for the performance and that's okay i mean like i said they've made such a huge leap here for the c7 corvettes uh that i think that all the interior qualities are very nice uh there's nothing to really complain about here and it's all just you know it feels very fitting for a car of this type as far as storage space in the Z06, it's pretty good. Uh, like all the other C7s, it's got the one very cool trick up its sleeve. But first, uh, you have, you know, map pockets here in the doors that are uh, pretty good size. You can fit some stuff in there. No bottle holder or anything like that. But, uh, you know, for a little sports car, I didn't expect that. So nice storage there. Uh, you do have a power outlet right up here. Uh, you have your two cup holders. And then you have uh, this center armrest, which is nicely padded. You open that up, and it's very shallow. I think it's even more shallow here in the Z06 than it was in the regular Corvette. But... 
Um, you know, so anything thicker than a smartphone will probably have trouble uh, sitting in there. Um, but you do have two USB jacks, an auxiliary jack, and a power outlet in there. So nice to have all those. And it is a wide and uh, you know, long space. It's just not deep at all. Um, but still nice to have that nonetheless. Uh, and then of course you obviously have all the storage behind you there that you can uh, you know just uh, toss anything you want back there as well. And there's the nice little uh, mat there, to, or I guess cargo tray thing to separate um, you know the different parts of the trunk there. So nice to have that. But the one really cool trick that the C7s all have is you hit this button and this screen just slides down and you have a nice large size cubby there. It's such a clever idea to put that there. And uh, you also have another USB jack in there. So if you want to put your phone in there and you know do the Apple CarPlay kind of stuff, you can toss all that in there and then it's hidden out of sight very nicely. So uh, yeah, overall, I think the storage, they did really well on the C7s here. All right, so sort of and go for a drive. Uh, you know, Z6 has the same key as the other Corvettes. Nice little key fob here you have. Of course, it's keyless, uh, you know, push button start and stuff. So you can hit the very nice metal engine start button. <laughs> Roars to life. <laughs> It's a setting off in the 2016 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. Well, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. I love the view out of these C7s. I love the way that you know you have the hood and the fenders that yeah, come up and over very aggressively. And uh, overall, it's just I mean it's such an awesome view forward. Um, as far as visibility goes, since we're talking about that, uh, view out of the sides is very good as well. The uh, B pillar is pretty far enough back there that it's not really too bad of a blind spot. I mean it is there. Um, um, but you know, I think this is a small enough car. It's not that big of a deal uh, view out of the back is spectacular as well with that hatch You have a lot of great visibility and so very easy to see out of there as well And we're uh, going over uh, some slightly bumpier road. We got some speed bumps here and stuff and uh, it's pretty smooth, you know, I mean it is definitely sportier I would say than a regular C7 um, But that's not a bad thing. Of course, this is ZS6. That's what you expect. Alrighty, so <laughs> Let's first turn onto the straight road here and see how it does. Like a dream though, I mean seriously, it's just, 
I mean, I'm not even gonna get close to the handling limits of this car on the streets, driving at any kind of reasonable speeds. So, uh, you know, it's uh, just one of those things you have to just believe that it's probably gonna be amazing. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't expect to, uh, you know, push this car even close to its limits here. Um, but as you can tell, it handles really, really well on back roads. Um, and I don't know, I think you'd have to be driving really, really crazy to uh, actually reach this car's limits on the streets. Um, but it's fun though, because even though you're not able to, you know, do 150 miles per hour on every corner, uh, it still dances around and it's still a challenge and it's still a driver's car that you have to drive. And there's not going to be millions of computers, you know, saving your butt. I mean, it does have trash control, stability control and stuff, and those have come on a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's nice because it doesn't feel like it's intervening so much that it's killing any of the fun, but it is keeping you from, you know, doing anything really stupid. Um, and so it uh, keeps you alive, which is always uh, what you want at the end of the day. One thing I will say is the clutch is a little tricky. Uh, not too bad. And I mean, this is a brand new car, so I'm sure once it's broken in a little bit, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, but uh, yeah, but this shifter does feel great though. That's one thing. As I've been going through the gears here, it actually, it's, it's gotten less tight feeling uh, and it's more natural feeling now. It feels really great to use and uh, it's honestly a perfect feeling gearbox. It's so good. I mean, I don't think I even reached the regular C7's limits on back roads yet, so uh, as you can hear everything flying around back there. But, um, you know, this just gives you the additional power and uh, does give you the additional grip too with the ZS6 package here. As we come up to a stop sign here, see how the brakes feel. Oh yeah, I mean, like as you would expect, <laughs> very, very meaty. Alright, we got some uneven pavement, but let's do another acceleration here, shall we? That whole front end lifts up. It's like you're in a drag racer. It's just, man, this thing will rip your head off. <laughs> and that's with me taking a break to shift uh, each time here. I'm sure the automatic is just unrelenting in the way that it pulls. This is one of those cars you just do not want to stop driving it. It's just too much fun with the power, too much fun with the handling, and it's just too thrilling because it's constantly, you know, you're having to, you know, stay on your toes and manage the power and be judicial and responsible with your throttle application. You can't just mash the gas and have the car figure it all out for you. And uh, that's really rewarding. Another acceleration, because it's just too much fun. Woohoo, sideways there! <laughs> yeah, and the bottom line is with these, it's just unbeatable. It's unbeatable at the price that it's at. You know, this is the only thing, this one, you know, even with the super nice interior and everything, is still well under 100,000 bucks at 93 and change. And uh, so it's like, you, there's nothing else that's this fast for the money, not even close. And you know, GTR used to be able to claim to be one of these, you know, screaming deals as far as uh, speed for the buck is concerned. But uh, this has to be way, way more, I mean, way more power uh, and way cheaper of a price now than the GTR as well. So uh, I think this is it. Now this is way more fun than a GTR too. Now the GTR probably ripped my head off a little bit more just because of the all wheel drive grip uh, and the crazy short gearing that the GTR has. But this, it's more exciting to drive because you're actually driving it and that's that's getting uh, increasingly rare in uh, supercars these days with everything doing everything for you I like having the manual and you know having the back end get squirrely and you know keeping it pointed straight and managing the oversteer and all that stuff that is what makes a fun driver's car to me and uh, so that is what makes this more fun than stuff like the GTR and uh, I mean the standard is tons of fun. I think it's still plenty of power, plenty of performance to keep, you know, 95% of enthusiasts happy. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for that extra oomph, then you certainly got it here with this. And like I said, it's still a screaming deal. Uh, you can't go faster for less money, you know, buying a brand new car. And uh, it's just, uh, and it looks amazing. And I mean, the technology and everything, it's just really phenomenal. All right, so as much as I don't want to get out of this, uh, let's hop into the automatic convertible and see how that is. All right, so we're now in the automatic convertible. Let's see how it does. <laughs> oh, I like to get that back end squirrely still, even in the convertible here. And uh, yeah, other convertible notes. Well, there's lots of space in the trunk. That's one great thing. Uh, even with the top down, you still have plenty of room there to fit 
uh, easily, you know, a set of golf clubs, uh, you know, probably a couple of duffel bags, things like that. So very usable still, and uh, you still get all the great drop top you know, glory here with this awesome sound. Completely unfiltered here with the convertible top, and uh, man oh man, it's just, I personally prefer this because it's even louder, it's even more dramatic because you have, you know, the elements and everything, it's just so much fun. Another nice thing about the convertible, no blind spot because you don't have the V filler there. So uh, at least for the top down, it's very easy to see over your shoulder. A couple other things I want to mention that I didn't mention in the hard top so far, uh, and that is that the throttle response and the brake, they all feel really responsive. Uh, the steering weight is really nice in all the modes, but uh, in sport mode, it definitely has that extra heft that I think a lot of enthusiasts like. And again, you can't even use half the power the streets because it's just so fast oh man it's great another thing while we're in the automatic here how does the automatic actually feel well it's like all the other applications of this 8-speed automatic in the CTSV that I reviewed in the uh, automatic Corvette that I reviewed the standard C7 they all feel good um, but it's again I, I still wish it was a little bit faster and I think their 10 speeds is going to improve upon that and the 10 speed will be the speed that I think uh, they really need because this 8 speed is good and if you're you know really getting on it and stuff and it kind of can predict what you want to do then it's great with the upshifts and stuff but if you try and uh, catch it off guard it does uh, hesitate a little bit sometimes when you're just cruising around here though at you know normal speeds it's a really nice cruiser there's not too much wind noise and honestly it's a really nice thing to just even leave even drive and just take in the elements and just cruise along here. Like I said, it uh, keeps itself pretty quiet whenever you're not, you know, really getting on it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice in that way. The exhaust is kind of funny though, it, especially here in the convertible. It's basically silent whenever you're not on it. And then the second you stop on it, it like immediately opens up and then just goes super loud and boisterous immediately. There's no middle ground. It's either screaming at you or it's completely silent. It's kind of funny. I'll show you about the downshifts here though. Hit the paddle and then it goes. Hit the paddle and then it goes. See, you can see I'm hitting it and then it upshifts. There's definitely a lag there. And uh, so for that reason, I would personally rather have the manual because lag like that just drives me crazy. And uh, I prefer the control of three pedals and the fun of rowing through the gears myself. But the eight speed is still really great, especially if you're looking for more of a cruiser, uh, you know, a nice daily driver. It still does have the fun of shifting your own gears and it does it fast enough to make it fun. Um, but you know, for those that are, you know, really love the full experience, I would still recommend the manual because it's fantastic. I do love the convertible though here. It's really nice. It uh, you know, lowers and raises pretty quickly as well. And you can do it at speed, which is also a nice perk. And so because of those you know, two things, I think you know, doing a manual convertible would be the way that I would go for it. Because I mean, the open top experience in the Corvette is really, really nice. And you do get that with the standard hardtop Z06. You can take that Targa portion off uh, and you know, still have some of your self exposed to the elements. But it's not, it doesn't match the full open top of the convertible. Here. One last acceleration here, just because it's too much fun. Here we go. Oh, that 8-speed though, it upshifts nice, I'm going to say. <laughs> Take care.